doing fraud. He's lied to everybody. Well, if you come out and you lie, that's fraud. You know, it's not false advertisement. It's just plain fraud. So that's why the whole GDPR, that's why our websites have had to change. That's why, of course, who pays? At the end of it, we do. That's not exactly them. it. Small we business do. pays for that. Mm-hmm. Big business has that already count, you know, figured in. But every single website, if, matter of fact, here's your public service announcement every single website should be GDPR compliant. Even if you think, I'm not going to be doing business in Europe, there's no That's reason. Correct. If yes. you're on the internet, you don't have a clue or know who is looking at your page. You no, can't control you that. No, you don't. So, you should just have the disclaimer on how you're going to utilize people's cookies and their information. And that's just, that's good business. Well, it, absolutely. And it shows that the change is now. He's He's got to the point now where the change has to happen. Well, didn't he come out and say that he was using our information, that he wasn't going to be doing other things for the, that's Patty, our producer. Oh, Patty. Oh. That's right. She's adding to it, huh? That's right. So, um. Matter of fact, you should put pictures of Patty on this. I sent you pictures too. That yes, we be. will. We'll have to do let's, that. Let's not get too but sidetracked. What, what I would like to bring back is, in closing on this comment or in on this argument is, have you ever noticed that companies like Hunts, uh, Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, or any of the really big companies do not advertise? You don't see anything with them on Facebook whatsoever. Whereas there's what, how many millions or billions of people would they reach if they put an ad on Facebook? Yeah, but that's the problem. In a way, I want you to think about this. Even though he hates small business and he's come out, he's point blank said and quoted that, you know, he doesn't care for uh, business, small business, although he's in business. This is the type of stuff that cracks me up. Um his number one supporter is small business and them running ads on Facebook. Well, it isn't true. Pepsi Cola, Pepsi. Well, yeah, Adidas. but if you look back at the history of Facebook, the first they were on there, they're not now. And if you go back and research okay, so the, because the analytics were false, the advertising numbers they got back from Facebook they proved were fictitious. And oh. at that time, they said, "No, we're never going to do it again." Okay, so haven't. tell us this. In the in the end result, what does this mean to people who use Facebook who uh, want to advertise on Facebook? Yeah, what what does it mean for the consumer, number one, and for the users of Facebook? What does all this mean? I think that if you really boil it down, what it's gonna end up being is a lack of trust. I really do think so. Based on fraudulent Fraudulent activities, activities, fake news, bad numbers, uh, changes that Facebook has had to make in their metric system to make sure. So what do we need to look at now? What? I'm a Facebook user, so what what do I do? I need to. I I think what you need to get off of it, or I think that what you need to do to be very serious is understand that what you put on there is not going to be the results that you think it's going to be. In other words, don't be oversold with the push routine or the uh, organic or the reaches or the numbers they come out with. Um, We have to be realistic about this whole thing. And Facebook doesn't have the numbers that everybody thinks that they do have. The other thing is a small company is concerned. It's still great. I mean, who cannot afford for free to put a little ad on there that goes all the way all over the world? Mm-hmm. I mean, if we were to step away from that as business or entrepreneurs, it would be in our advertising program. It would be totally stupid because you can link back naturally in your Facebook ad to your other social platforms that you have. You can link back to your web page, which is so very, very important. So they're the center of social media hub. There's no doubt about it. But I think we have to look at it realistically. And on a business sense, Candace is going to now tell us how important that is to look at realistically in a business. Well, I think for my final word, I'm just going to call out to any of those uh, creators that they should they should actually create a hub for community um, and create something similar to Facebook where communities can connect and... and uh, I think they should take it down. I mean, I think in a, they should in too. a way that has integrity.
just good, solid business. Like because there, there's lots, there's millions to be made. Oh yes, very definitely. I'm just not uh, created to create a, a tech platform for people to log in and you know live their and, lives. Well, that's very, very true. And we also have to kind of continuously watch out because Facebook is buying up little companies on the smaller platforms we're not even aware of. Instagram was their first major purchase, and he ate that up. And now the founders who were paid to stay with him have left Facebook. They've quit. They've started another platform. And it's amazing. Why would you walk away after being paid big bucks and having a big salary? Maybe they have a conscience. That's exactly what's coming up. A lot of his big top management people are walking away because they know it's not right and he's not listening. Simple as that. 2011, the man who made the marketing on Facebook so outrageously good and made it grow so fast, walked out of the boardroom and said, you're not listening. I don't believe in what you're doing. And he quit. I mean, that's big. And if you sit down and look at the history of Facebook, you're going to find several have walked out the door. Instagram, that guy had it made in the shade. He was paid to stay there. He got a big chunk of money for turning over Instagram to Facebook. Well, didn't he try to buy up Snapchat? Yes, and Snapchat said absolutely not. They would not sell no matter how many billion he wanted to, you know, hand them. So his order to his constituency, as far as Facebook was concerned, we've got to go after that audience, and we've got to put the pressure on Snapchat to drive them out so we can pick him up at a loss. That's his attitude. If you're not going to sell at his price, then we go after you because we have billions of dollars and we control social media. So you're either going to kiss my feet or you're going to, you're gone. Well, then I would encourage our listeners to go out there and join Snapchat, right? Well, a lot of kids, zero to 25, are at at Snapchat right now. It's kind of like, you remember the old days when we had uh, some of the, well, Vin is one. That guy invented VIN. That was supposed to be 10-second video clips of you doing something stupid. And the younger younger group... Oh, my gosh. Well, we see that all the time. (laughs) Yeah, we do that on the air. No. Uh, And and it got everybody all excited. What happened to VIN? He puts the pressure on. Two years later, it's gone. They're gone. So, anyway, i got to close the show. We could go on about this for hours. Uh, Candace has got some really good ideas on how to really show small business how to brand yourself and what are the good points and the points that you should watch out for when you get involved. Well, check us out on <laughs> check us out on Facebook. No, go ahead and although we are on Facebook. Facebook, yes, you know, yes. Give us uh, a plus. We Check Facebook. out our website at wldchildgrp.com, wildchildgroup.com. You can email me at Candace, C-A-N-D-A-C-E. At WLDCHILDGRP dot com. She knows the alphabet. That's really good. Or you can actually call her on the telephone. At 253-961-7525. Excellent. So until we get a time to sit down and talk with you again from the Wild Child Theater, this is the Disruptors. Have a great day.